Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking more about explainable AI, going off the explainable AI cheat sheet. Um, and we'll, we'll be talking about a method that is right here. I think called probes. So this, this is one of the uh, methods that enable us to uh, explore the neural representations of neural networks. And let's get right down to it. Now this builds on uh, a little bit on what we talked about in the activation matrix video and in data examples. And so if you've watched that video, it sets you up um, a little bit for this. So let me motivate a little bit of why something like probes are, are useful or interesting. Think about something like Google Translate. Um, uh, machine translation, I find, is absolutely fascinating. You can give Google Translate a sentence, so let's say everybody dance now, and it is able to translate it and give you translation in any sort of language that you'd like. Now, there has been several different architectures for how a neural machine translation model works. Now they do them with transformers, but at some point they used two separate, let's say, RNN models. You can think of them as two separate neural networks. One is an encoder and one is a decoder. Um, that's still, in a way, the, the, the format here, but I'm, I'm oversimplifying it a little bit. And how the model would process this is that the input sentence would go into the encoder, which has a semblance, from its training, sort of seems to be able to comprehend a little bit, quote unquote, comprehend um, the English language. And the encoder would pass a, a vector to the decoder, and then the decoder uh, would output a sentence in the target language. So you can train this multiple ways, but maybe you'd have a decoder for each separate output language and an encoder for each input language. Um, when I first understood or read about the, the Google Neural Machine Translation uh, paper, I, I got really intrigued about this part right here. So what we have here is two models, and one of them seems to understand something about one language and just seems to whisper something to the other model uh, that would output it in, in a separate la uh, language. And that is really interesting. It's like, we don't really understand the, the, the language that the two of them talk um, in, in between, but th that seems to communicate a lot of concepts, ideas, anything that you've used uh, translation for, machine translation for, uh, this pipe has communicated the ideas that you wanted to look for from one language to another. So how do we sort of get to understand this this vector language, this representation, this, this series of numbers, or it can be a matrix in, in later models, but then how can we sort of get some glimpses into how these models through their training are arriving at a, a, a language to um, communicate. It's not a language, it's a, it's a representation, I think is, is the best term to use here. So probes are tools that um, sort of enable us to uh, try to decipher some of the, of the properties of the input or the output and whether they exist in this uh, representation or not. One of the papers that we would look at is uh, this paper, I think, from Facebook um, AI research that seemed to uh, use probes to compare sentence embedding uh, models. And so a sentence embedding model is kind of very similar to, to the encoder there. Uh, you give it a sentence and to up with a vector representation of that sentence. Uh, so we can we can uh, see that example here. But then if we want to probe, so let's go over a little bit over what what probing is like as a process to maybe try to understand those those representations. So if we would probe, we can say we don't need just one sentence. We need like a thousand sentences uh, because we need a lot of examples of this representation down below. And so let's say here we have a thousand examples. Each one is a sentence, so this would be a second sentence and then all the way to, to a thousand sentences. Now, we cannot extract a lot of information from here. We need a property. If we know a specific property of the inputs, we can create or train a probe to understand if that 
property is encoded here or not. One of the simpler examples here, uh, it's probably the simplest one that they mentioned in that paper, is that to say, okay, is the sentence short or long? And then our probe would try to probe this uh, representation and try to see, is sentence length encoded here? Or is it lost somewhere in, in the encoding? And that's one way to, to, to probe the availability of this kind of information in this representation. Here you have that uh, those representations. Let's say each sentence embedding is, let's say, maybe 768. Um, so there are these columns here. So we have a thousand uh, examples, a thousand rows. And then the labels are whether the sentence is short or long. So if it's short, we say zero. If it's uh, long, we say it's one. And from here on, we treat it as a data set that we just pass to a classifier. So we can break into a training set and a testing set. And then we have our probe. And then we train our probe on the training set. So this training is to say, OK, given this row, this the orange part of, of the row, uh, we want you to, as a model, so this is a, a simple neural network uh, in its own, the, the, the probe, but it's a small one. Uh, we want you to be, we to train or output these values in uh, for the labels. And if the probe is able to learn this and accurately predict the actual labels of the test set, then we can say that if it's a high accuracy, if this prediction is, is, a, is a high accuracy, then it's an indication that this property is actually uh, encoded into the vectors. And then that's one way to understand that, um, yes, this sentence encoder, so to speak, is um, encoding sentence length, whether something is short or long. This is one table from the paper. And what you want to see here is, so this is, for example, sentence length. So each column is a property of, of the sentence. Um, and then these are separate, different kinds of, of models, and they're trained on different kinds of, of, of data sets. And so you can say here, you can see here that this is an untrained uh, model. And its accuracy on the test set after it was trained is about 63%. So the randomly initialized untrained model here does not encode uh, sentence length um, because it seems to have it seems to have a, a low accuracy. But then here, this autoencoder seems to do encode whether the sentence is short or long because it has a very high accuracy. And so that's one way that probes tell you if a specific representation of a model contains a property or not. Now, we are not limited to only probing, let's say, sentence embeddings. We can also uh, look at the embeddings of words and one of the earlier papers uh, or tokens. One of the earlier papers um, is this one by Sara Valdun, Dilka Hukus, and uh, Yelo Zudima uh, that looked at the probing the representations of a RNN as it's processing each input uh, token. And this works in the same way, except the rows here are tokens. So it, each row is not a uh, sentence, but rather a word or a, or a token. And then the property has to be a property that we're probing for is a property of the word. And so instead of short or long, we can say this is part of speech data. So we can say, you know, this is a pronoun or this is a verb or this is uh, something else. And so in this way, we can probe whether this representation encodes this information or not. Now, one point of discussion and debate is whether to use small probes or large probes. The challenge with if you use a large uh, probe with uh, you know, a couple of uh, hidden layers is that you might get a high accuracy score, but the high accuracy score is not telling you what you think it's telling you. So it could be that the probe is actually just memorizing the task and not really telling you that the um, representation encodes that. So th th this debate sort of uh, goes on. And one paper that discusses this and uh, presents an idea to go around this uh, called controlled tasks 
is uh, this paper by, by, by John Hewitt and, and Percy Liang. Basically, they talk about an idea called control tasks, where you train a probe on the actual data, let's say part of speech that you want, but you also train another probe on a random or a randomized um, a task. And then you don't just report the accuracy, you report the accuracy um, and the difference between the two. Uh, and if the difference is high, then the probe is actually extracting the information from the, the probe and it's not just memorizing the task. So this has been a quick, gentle intro to uh, probing classifiers. If, if you think about this table here, the, the orange part of the table at least, um, this is pretty much the activation uh, matrix, but it's for a select uh, number of, of neurons. So it's not, activation matrices don't have to be for every neuron in a model. Um, there's a, a lot of the times there's focus on the output neurons and that's what you have here. And so this is how it sort of ties with our opening example of dataset um, examples and, and the activation matrix. The papers we mentioned are linked um, down below. I uh, hope you at least have an intuition about probes and uh, how they can be used to understand uh, representations and models. Um, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.